This is my brand new bullet journal. As you can see, it's completely empty and the cover's a little black. So I thought I would design and draw on the front cover, the back cover, the inside and the back pocket. <laughs> Let's see what I come up with. I'll be using my Copic markers for the blunt of the work, um, but first I'll need a pencil and start sketching out my idea. I did all my thumbnailing and like pre-sketching before jumping into the cover because I wanted to have a pretty good idea of what I wanted to draw before, you know, <laughs> I like went all in. So I kind of came to the conclusion that I wanted to draw a bit of like a studious looking character, but like also fashionable and like, I don't know, like a college aged individual with fashion sense and then glasses so that they looked, you know, studious. <laughs> that was the idea because for me, bullet journaling has been really, really helpful for me to keep track of like my daily to-do lists. And that's how I use it. I use it just to keep track of what I need to do, what I've already done, and then, you know, just to make sure that I'm not missing out anything. And by writing it down and making little checklists has been extremely helpful. So when I think of my bullet journal, I think of being productive. I think of getting good grades. I think of just doing well in life. So I wanted to create a character who looked like they had a pretty good handle on things. So that is what I'm doing. I gave her a bit of a messy bun, those studious glasses, like I mentioned before, a fashionable outfit, and of course a backpack. Oh, and I also um, gave her a pencil sticking out behind her ear so that you know, she knows how to check off her to-do lists, I guess. Then once I was pretty happy with the layout on the page and like making sure the character fit pretty well and there wasn't any like giant blocks of white space that just looked unnatural, I went in and started adding in the details. Now with all of my thumbnails, I'd never really put in a lot of detail. So this was definitely a new step and it was time to really develop this character and make sure it looked the way that I wanted or well, I guess as close to the way I wanted that I could physically do. <laughs> so I was going in and adding the details to like the hair and making sure that the hair looked like it had a little bit of volume to it, but it was also like sort of unkept. And then like uh, the face, I realigned the eyeballs a little bit better and made sure that she had a, a forehead. This is something I kind of like mess up with with my art. I always like forget to give my characters foreheads and I have a pretty decently large size forehead. So it's like, <laughs> you'd think I'd remember that those things exist and give them to my characters. So I wanted to make sure that I gave this character a forehead. And the glasses I had drawn originally weren't exaggerated enough, so I decided to give her these giant circular glasses so that they're super obvious and you know that she's wearing glasses. <laughs> I don't want them to be too subtle. I want them to be, you know, on her face, in your face, you know. And to give her a little bit of originality and to pull her a little away from that generic Harry Potter look, I gave little heart details to the rims of the glasses, which I think is quite cute. <laughs> And continuing the detailing stage, I went in and add some more details to like the ruffles on her shirt and defined her hand a little bit more so it wasn't just a plain little blob. I also decided on what I wanted like her pants seams to look like and like where they should go and the belt loops and things and also the like section, the bottom section of her shirt. I added like that cute little, what's it called? Like a tie, so it's like a, it's kind of like a wraparound shirt and then it ties on the side. So that creates that like V-neck. That was the idea at least. And then I added ruffles to the bottom of that because I thought that'd be really cute. And it kind of like pulls in the ruffles on the sleeves and you know, it's a cute little crop top thing. I don't personally know a lot about fashion. I'm kind of just faking it from what I've seen on Pinterest. And when I was happy with basically where the art was at that point, I just erased that top bun section. So I'm erasing a small section at a time and adding in the line art. It's kind of hard to see what's going on because of the camera angle, but I'm taking it very slowly, trying to add depth to any places that might be more in shadow than others. And basically just trying to incorporate all of the small little tips and tricks that I learned from doing Inktober back in October. It'd be kind of hard to explain what those are without you having experienced it yourself, but like basically, I use that word a lot, but what I'm trying to do is create depth in the line art so that it doesn't look too stiff. And that might include like not closing all the lines completely or using thinner lines for less obvious sections of like the hair and then thicker lines for like 
thicker sections of the hair. Does that make sense? Like parts that are with more depth get more lines and I'm also using like hatching for sections that would be more in shadow. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> but the best thing I could suggest is that you just draw a lot and use a lot of line art and see what looks best in your style and what looks not so good in your style and kind of avoid those things and lean towards the things that look good, you know? <laughs> and the things that are fun, of course, also incorporate those. And usually when something starts looking good, it's a little bit more fun. I'm not gonna lie, that that's just kind of the truth. So <laughs> try to incorporate those things into your art and you'll definitely see improvement and maybe even have fun, you know? Woohoo! <laughs> One of my favorite things to add line art to is ruffles, so I'm just enjoying this a lot. Oh, I just realized I didn't mention what pen I'm using. I'm using a Prismacolor Premier um, Fine Liner, and this is the 05 size. I've tested this with my Copic markers a few times and it's always worked pretty well, so I've decided to use that for this particular drawing because I trust it. <laughs> With all fine liners, it's pretty important to, you know, give them their time to dry before you start attacking them with like any sort of wet medium. So, you know, just give them their little chance and always, you know, test them before you go in for your drawing. Oh, it's, there's nothing worse than when you've done the entire line art of your drawing and then you go in with like a marker and then everything just smudges. Oh, I've been there. After erasing most of the sketches, I realized I completely forgot to draw in the glasses with the pen. So that's what I'm doing right here. Being very slow and careful, trying to get as perfect of a circle as I can with my free hand. And I'm quite happy with the way they turned out. Then I just finished up by adding the line art to her pants, adding in those seams. Those are so much fun to draw. And I was done with the line art. And so it was time to go in with the Copic markers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I made sure there was no sketches left because I really don't like the way pencil lead interacts with Copic markers. It's just blechy. So I made sure that was all gone. And then I used E15 to color in the skin. And I particularly in my head imagined her skin significantly darker than this mid-tone paper that I'm drawing on. And the cool thing about mid-tone paper is that it is a mid-tone. So you can either add lighter hues by using like an opaque pencil in the color white and you can actually draw with white, which is cool. And you can also get darker which is what I wanted to do for the skin. You'll notice as I'm drawing this that my E13 marker was definitely running low but <laughs> I was a little too afraid to try and mix it with another color so I kind of just wung it and um, by the time I get to the end I think it's a little less obvious because I go over it so many times so <laughs> just bear with me. And while I didn't have like a complete color scheme in mind when I started, cause I didn't do enough uh, pre-planning, I did, I kept seeing the color pink and brown. So I was like, mm, those are the colors I'm gonna use. So that is definitely what I gravitated towards. I did end up using some more colors as well, but the cool, another, well, another cool thing about using these toned paper or this toned cover of this bullet journal as it would be, is that the colors, um, because they have that mid-tone behind them, they all kind of create a bit of a cohesive color scheme no matter what color you pick. It kind of just helps them blend together. I'm sure there's some colors you could pick that would just be like, whoa, that's kind of way out there. But for the most part, you have a lot more leeway when you're picking colors because they're not being drawn on like a flat white surface and they're all having that hint of that mid-tony tan color and then it's gonna help with your color scheme overall. So me being a beginner with color theory, it's it's kind of fun to be able to just use whatever color and it kind of looks good. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Is it obvious that I had a lot of fun with this? Because <laughs> I had a lot of fun drawing this, okay? I'm just, I gotta be honest. Oh, what I was talking about earlier was really obvious with that last clip where I used RV000 to color in the pants, which is like a light pink violet color. But when I put it over this tan paper, it looks like a khaki color. <laughs> okay, but then here I'm using G21, which is a bit of a light green, and by going over the backpack to give her a nice green earthy toned backpack. And this looks really cool because it has that hint, that that tan color behind it, and it makes the color scheme just blend together and oh yes. <sighs> I like don't even know what to say. I'm just like in such a good mood. I just really enjoy drawing this. I used G99 to add some pretty simple shading to the backpack just to add a little bit more depth and make it look two dimensional, not two dimensional, three dimensional. <laughs> and then I colored in her hair. I actually used two different colors. I used YG95, which is a bit like a yellowy green color. And I 
colored in like the shaded bits of her hair and then colored over top of that with E15, which is a reddish brown. And I feel like it really helped pull the background color of, cause I used that like YG85, 95, one of those, I don't know this color. And I used that to create the shading. So then when I went over it with the E15, it's reacting to that green color underneath of it. And then it's also where there is no green, it looks brighter and perkier. And I feel like that really helps with the way hair looks in real life, like where it's shadow, where hair has shadows, there's like less vibrancy to it. And then where hair has like light hitting it, it's more vibrant. And I feel like that really played well with that, if that made any sense at all. I've feel like I'm rambling at this point. <laughs> then I took a step back and kind of looked at the whole thing and realized I wasn't really happy with that really light khaki color for pants. So I went in with a much more vibrant pink and just colored over the top of that with it. And I think it's, you know, just much brighter and more what I was looking for. And then to tie that like green color more into the illustration, I used that same green color and added stripes to the pants so that it's more like a fun pattern. <laughs> and I really like that. I would wear those pants. I started adding yellow shading to her top, but after looking at it, I realized I really didn't want her to wear a yellow top. So I switched over to a pink color. And while the yellow shading was still there, I just colored over it with the pink and it actually looked really well. I don't think it made any weirdness to it. That didn't make sense. I don't think it really made anything look weird. I think it just, I think it actually added to the illustration by adding like shadows with like a slightly different hue to them. I think it's cool. <laughs> so I'm kind of happy with that little mistake. So yeah, just like Mr. Ross would say, you know, happy little accidents. And it was actually because of that like yellow mistake that I decided not to completely color in her top with pink, but add that like sort of gradient and almost like tulip effect. And so, yeah, I'm really happy with that. I'm definitely happy with that choice. I think it really adds to the drawing. It just makes it look a little special. It's not just a plain flat colored top. It's got a little, you know, something extra. After adding shading to the skin with that same pink color, I realized I wanted her lips to be a little bit more bold. So I went in with a darker, almost reddish brown color for the lips and it really made them pop. And I really liked that. So I decided to give her some more bold makeup with the eyes as well. So I went in and started slowly darkening it. I started with like a lighter color and then I was like, no, it needs to be more. So then I darkened that and I was like more. And then I darkened that. And then we ended up with that really bold dramatic eye. So we have the lips and the eye and I really like it. I feel like she, she likes to play around with makeup. So that was, <laughs> I feel like I'm learning more about this character as I progress. <laughs> and then I was done coloring in the character, but wait, this is where it starts getting really in. Interesting. I didn't want her to just sit there on a blank page. I needed to add something interesting to the background. And I decided on stripes. At first I used a dark color for a stripe and then a light color for a stripe and kept alternating between those. But the more I did it, the less I really, like the more time it had been since I used the light green color, the more faded it was and the less you could see it. So it just felt kind of pointless. So I decided to just color in the rest of the background with just the darker stripe and just kind of mentally imagine where the lighter stripe would be to save time. And it still ended up with like the same results. So I think it was a good decision. And I was really happy with all the color choices up to this point, but I wanted to make it pop a bit more. And going into this, I knew I was going to be using my Posca white pen. Um, <laughs> So now was the time and I decided to outline the entire character with the white pen and it just made everything just, I, I just love it. It's just that fun extra texture. It's like a little cartooniness. I don't know what, I don't know what you would say. Illustrative. I don't know. It's just really, really cool. And I really like the effect that it has. It makes her stand out from those stripes. And then to incorporate that a little bit more to the background, I added these like circles, just some abstract circles to the background to kind of just spread out that white color. So it wasn't so concentrated around the character and it became more part of the illustration. I was really in love with just the brightness and the vibrance of the white pen. So I decided to also incorporate it into her outfit just a tad. So I added more circles and dots to her top and used it to make like her teeth and the glasses pop a little bit more and also used it on her bracelets and added some doodles to her backpack. Like the 
it's not a brand new backpack. She's used it for a while and maybe she started doodling on it one day at class kind of thing. <laughs> and then I also used a light pink color and filled in just a couple of the circles at random to kind of add again, just a more interesting element to the background. Then I just added some final tweaks here and there using both the Posca pen in some cases and markers in other. <laughs> and then I was done with the cover of my new bullet journal. But to personalize the bullet journal even more, I decided to customize the inside cover. And this I added a little this belongs to section so that I could put my name in there. And then I also made it all sort of match the cover. And I did this by adding glasses up at the top. So it's like her glasses and she took them off. So they're sitting there at the top. And at the bottom, I added her backpack just sort of to incorporate elements of the cover. And of course it really wouldn't resemble the cover if it didn't have those big bold green stripes. So I added those as well. And of course some circles and pink circles and Posca pen and stuff, <laughs> outlining things. Yeah, that and that. And then it sort of matched the cover. But I wasn't done yet. I decided to also incorporate this sort of design to the back pocket, which I had mistakenly used as a swatch paper to see if the markers and the pen would work well together on this paper. But I decided to just ignore that and add the stripes and I used like this old sticky note to put into the pocket so that the stripe would end right at the end of the pocket and I could get a very crisp line there with the stripes. And then of course I added in the circles as well so that, you know, it's matchy matchy. <laughs> this I kept really simple. So that was just about it for the back pocket. And the only thing that remained was the back cover. So I just opened up the, the book like completely flat and started adding in the strokes. I tried to use a ruler, but it wasn't really helping keep the ink in a straight line. So I kind of just gave up on that and just freehanded the rest of them. And I tried to add like a cool little element at the end where it's like some of the stripes don't make it all the way to the top, you know, like a more designer design thing <laughs> but i don't know i feel like it just kind of looks unfinished what do you think and then of course i added in these circle designs i don't know i guess i could call them bubbles they look a little bit like bubbles so i added in those bubbles and colored a few of those in to represent the original design and i was done i had a almost completely customized bullet journal and I'm really happy with it. If you remember, was it last year or two years ago? I did sort of the same thing. So this is my old bullet journal right here. Um, I feel like I've improved a little bit art wise <laughs> and I'm, I'm really happy with the new one. And I'm so glad that I went through and like added in like the back cover and everything. I feel like it just feels more personalized and I'm really, really happy with it. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope you um, enjoyed seeing how I did customize my new bullet journal. I'm very excited to start using this because I finished my old one and <laughs> it's time to get back on track with things. Um, yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys all next week and I hope you have a delicious evening. Follow Waffles! Bye!